Welcome, everyone. Thank you very much for joining me today. Uh, let me introduce myself. My name is Ahmed Samir. I'm part of the product and services team here in Pearson, Dubai. And today, I'm super excited to be with you today to introduce my lab programming. This tool will help you a lot as an instructor, as well as will help your students to achieve their goals and to master the programming, whatever the language that, of programming that they are studying on, whether it's Java, C++, C, Python, you will find a wonderful tool inside the MyLab programming, which will help the student a lot to master the course using this tool and will help the instructor a lot with saving a huge amount of time, creating the homework, grading the homework, giving the student the feedback, tracking the student performance, etc. So um, if you have any question during the session, feel free to write it on the chat box, and maybe by the end of the session, I can review it and answer you, your question. This session today will be classified into two main parts. The first part will be from the PowerPoint slide. I will explain um, some important points about the MyLab programming and the features inside the engine for the instructor and the students. And then uh, the second part of my uh, presentation today or webinar will be from the online part of the MyLab programming. So I will go to the browser and sign into the MyLab programming and access the platform from there and then just show you some of the very interesting uh, feature, features inside the MyLab program. Um, so this platform will help your student to crack the code with Pearson MyLab programming. It's an amazing solution. But before we go into deep details and uh, talk about the features and benefits of using this platform, let's first look at the Pearson MyLab programming from definition perspective. What's MyLab programming from a student and from an instructor perspective? So from an instructor, it's very easy. Uh, course management system tied to uh, your course or your book curriculum, book title, uh, the content inside the platform created by the author and the author team, uh, to help the instructor to achieve the goal based on the learning objectives and learning outcome that he or she uh, would like to achieve with this. So it's a course management system help the instructor to create assignment, track the student progress, customize the content inside the platform to be tailored according to the course syllabus or the course outcome. Using a lot of tools to engage the student before the class, during the class, and after the class, like the uh, Pearson e-text, the video tutorial, the instructor resources, a lot of teaching resources, material like the PowerPoint instructor manual, solution manual, and much more, uh, which will help the instructor teaching and deliver this course in a efficient, <clears throat> excuse me, in an efficient and in a very easy, smooth, uh, way of delivering this course. So this is from an instructor perspective. From a student perspective, it's a homework tutorial and assessment system, which will help the student to have unlimited number of practice, unlimited number of trial, using the, um, the new innovative way of uh, solving the question with the pro problem solving techniques, uh, problem so solving methods, that will help the student to focus rather than just seeing the syntax of the coding. Um, again, with additional resources for the student, will help the student to master this course before the class, during the class, and after the class. Like the video tutorial notes, and we will explain that later on, like the Pearson e-text online and offline application, and like that unlimited number of practice with the immediately feedback that appear after the student submit that. I hope that can give you a summary uh, of the definition for the platform for the, uh, from an instructor and student perspective. And let's move on into the tools to help students succeed with this. 
as you can see here, interactive practice. So we know all that uh, practice makes perfect. So when the student practice and try the code several times, they can master it uh, with the very interactive way or in an interactive online environment, student can try to solve the, the code exercise and moving on to the next part, immediately feedback as if a private tutor sitting with the student. Imagine if you have hundreds or thousands of students in your course, you can definitely sit with every single student, give them a feedback, uh, personalized feedback about uh, each specific student mistake. With the logic and the compiler error, this will be tailored the feedback according to each specific student need, as you can see here on the screen, and definitely will open that online. Here, the system automatically highlights for the students where is the mistake using the comp compiler er error to, uh, to read the, the coding exercise or the software and giving the, the student detailed feedback about his or her own mistake. So updated improved feedback as well, test the case, uh, case tables. Now on the first page of feedback and early, earlier to read, this will help the student to read the, the feedback before even going uh, into the mistakes. As you can see here, the remarks and more hints when they click on uh, click here, it will open a hint for the student, which is simplify the question for the student the student, we called it the learning aids. Uh, simplify the, 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 not only giving them a feedback, but even simplify the, the problem to the student to help them answer this question. This is a new feature that's available inside the MyLab programming called the hint, uh, which will help the student to practice and improve the results while, while using this platform. Moving on, this is very, very important part, problem solving through programming. Rather than for the student using our focus on the syntax, they, we will have um, a new innovative way or new approach for programming as a method for uh, problem solving rather than the, the syntax one. As you can see here on the right-hand side, example of the exercise, and programming data structure with uh, algorithm are seamless integrated into one text. This uh, practical approach to teach data structure covers how to use and uh, implement various data structure to develop um, efficient algorithmic technique. Before uh, introducing custom data structure for uh, the graphs, this will not, was not available inside the, the problems. Now with the data structure and algorithmic problems will help the student to focus more in uh, the problem solving rather than the syntax of, of, of this coding exercise. Math functions, code using math functions will help the student a lot to practice using this math function. And we have a full chapters. Uh, two chapters inside each course on my lab programming, just focus on mathematics. So student can practice math while taking the programming course. Engaging problems introduce each chapter and um, are solved within the chapter, some engaging, engaging problems for the student to motivate the student and encourage them to understand the concept of this uh, particular chapter or learning objective. Programming exercises, and this is the core thing uh, about the problem-driven focus, not only the traditional way of delivering the question, the MCQs, true or false, or choose from different options. We have the programming exercise where the student can practice the programming, writing a full code, uh, building a new, uh, software in the platform and see the result of that. Problems and case studies um, 
are really carefully chosen by the author team and presented in a very easy to follow up the science teaching problem solving and programming concepts. And you will find, or the student will find a lot of um, case studies in the video uh, channel, which I will share it with you later on. Explain in the whiteboard by handwriting how to solve this um, uh, prop, uh, coding exercise. As if a private tutor sitting with the student, um, show them how to solve this uh, case study or problem. Another tool to help the student succeed with their course. This tool, the first one to stop student cheating, but the other two tools here, the video notes tutorial, this is what I told you about. Um, this is the author or one of the author team explained for the student um, this numerical error in the whiteboard by handwriting on the screen as if a private tutor sitting with the student show them how to solve this problem. And the Pearson eText amazing tool with a lot of annotation feature help the student to, um, to take note, study using this uh, application online and offline, um, as well as the new, to, new um, uh, option plagiarism dictation tool. If the student copying the code from his or her own colleagues or even from Google or internet, the system will capture this pleasure list and show you in each exercise, in each single exercise, which I will show it to you online, the report that can um, detect if the student copying the code or the software from another student or from the internet. So those tools can help the student to succeed with the co course and the pleasure lesson dictation tool will help the, um, the instructor to track if there is a cheating between a student or the student copying the code from another um, different source. Moving on, this is the Pearson eText, wonderful tool come as a value pack on the top of the MyLab programming. Student can access the digital version of the Pearson uh, physical book in a lovely format when they go to the App Store or Google Play, whether they use Android system or iOS system, they can download the uh, source of the Pearson eText and access the book offline. The lovely thing about the Pearson eText from the instructor side and even from a student, but the, from the great thing from uh, the instructor side, you can highlight some part. You can leave note, you can bookmark some pages, and this automatically will synchronize into the student view in a lovely navi navigation bar, which I will show it to you online. From the student view, definitely, if the student use any tablet device or smartphone, they can um, download the application and access the book offline without internet. This is the video example. As you can see here, um, the author or one of the author team explained by handwriting on the, um, uh, on the whiteboard, how the student will solve this case study or problem. This is a problem for uh, a while loop for, I, I think, chapter four, uh, for this particular title. Here, the author explained for the student how to solve this example. And definitely, I will show it to you online. Compiler error. Um, this is, again, one of the lovely points um, inside the programming software for my lab programming. When the student solved the, the, the problem, here, the, the lovely thing from an instructor view that you can see all the solutions with all the pr probability of the student to solve this uh, problem and with all different techniques of solving this problem. We know that a student in programming can solve the programming exercise in a different shapes and different techniques and all of them uh, can be right or correct answer. So the system automatically will capture this and show the instructor the solution here with all the submission or all the correct submission. But definitely this will not appear to the student. They cannot see the solution until it's uh, free, uh, stop the exercise and it's available by the instructor to the student. Then they can review the correct answer. But here in the compiler error, once the student clicks submit, 
the exercise, um, they can see the remarks for each line. Where is the, the mistake? Plus the hint, the, here the hint is not available because maybe this is a snapshot, but online you will see the hint, which is a new feature added to the compiler error and um, my lab program. So the code analysis or the compiler errors will show the student the remarks line by line, where is exactly the mistake and hint to help them to understand the concept and try to solve this exercise. Last but not least uh, for the PowerPoint is the data analytics. I know how important is this for the instructor to track the student performance by date, by time, by difficulty, and even by average score. And uh, even if you can, or you want to search by a particular student, you can see that from here. As you can see from my screen, I can see all the student uh, score, all the uh, student roster, sorry, all the student name on the left-hand side, and here all the exercises with the correct answer, with uh, uh, still in progress, with the wrong uh, answer, and with, um, uh, with all the analysis for all the exercises. I can definitely email this roster or this grade book analysis direct to my email, or I can export this data offline. I can search by a particular student from here or open, click on one of the exercises and see the analysis for this particular exercise. So I can track horizontal or vertical student uh, uh, progress and the feedback, as well as exercise uh, analysis and um, calculating the average. Plus, I can open one of the student names from here, search for a student, and got all the analysis about this uh, student, date of work, uh, their submission, the score, difficulty, what are the challenge, where is the student at rest, etc. So this is amazing analysis, which will show the instructor um, all the feedback about all the student roster and, uh, uh, and their submission. So I hope that makes sense and give you like um, an overview about my lab programming. I think the next step of my slide today or my session today will be from the online. I will uh, skip this PowerPoint and go online to my lab programming just to show you some of the key features of the platform. So from here, This is the MyLab programming website. What you need to do, just go to Pearson MyLab programming. You have as an instructor, a username and password. What you need to do, just click sign in and it will take you direct to the platform where you will find all your courses. As you can see, those are all my courses. But there is a wonderful tool before we jump into one of the courses and explain the features inside the platform. The wonderful tool is that you have access to all Pearson books that comes with the MyLab programming. Here, as you can see on my platform, I have all the courses for 2022, all the previous courses for 21, and uh, old courses for 2020. When I click here, I can find the courses that I previously to teach them to my students. Uh, so I can track all the previous courses that I already give it to my student. It will remain into my platform. In order to add one of the courses to my platform and the wonderful tool uh, about access more than 20 courses or all the Pearson books that comes with uh, my lab programming, what you need to do, just click here, add a course. It might take some time to load all the bookshelves um, and all the courses for my lab programming. So imagine if you teach maybe intro to Java, you can copy question from Python course or C++ or other courses. From here, I can go to Pearson My Lab Programming Global Editions. And as you can see, you have access to all Pearson books that comes with My Lab Programming. For instance, I want to choose some question from Dital and Dital. Uh, Java. I'm going to clone this course 
and copy it to my uh, platform. Just give it a name. Uh, maybe I prefer to have the book name as a course name, or you can write it in anything. CS 2022, section one, maybe. Uh, you choose all the detail here, write how many section you want to create it for this course, course number, uh, maybe this is 101, and uh, click save. That's it. The course will be added into your bookshelf. You can choose content from inside this section and add it to a different book as well. Uh, the unique thing, which will be automatically created by the system, the course ID. This is very important piece of information that you need to give it to your student in order to register and join your class. So I need to reload this and the new course will appear here in my bookshelf. So just loading my courses and here is the new course, it's available. And this is the course ID that I need to give it to my student in order to register and enroll into my section. Now, again, you can do this process very easy. We take a few seconds from you to um, create other courses, unlimited number of courses. You can build it in your platform um, to check the resources for this title, to check the exercises. Even you can copy uh, some of the exercises or coding uh, problems that's available in other title, which comes with the MyLab programming. So for example, I want to copy the Python uh, course for Gaddis. I'm going to clone this, do it again one more time, give it um, a name for the section, exactly like the previous one, and click Done. That will be added, and the system automatically will create the unique course ID. Easy like this to create the course and share the course ID with your student. So this is the setup and implementation. Definitely your account manager will give you a username and password and um, your account will be active for you to create course and uh, share the course ID with your student. Now let's jump into one of the courses that I already previously created for my student. Uh, I'm going to loading this. Uh, to explain or show you the features inside the platform, like how to organize the content, how to customize the content, how to assign any of the questions to your student, how to create one of the uh, new exercises in some, inside the platform. This exercise could be a traditional way of uh, creating the exercise or coding exercise, how to track the student progress and how to download the great book report plus how to see the uh, pleasureless dictation, and finally, we'll see the um, uh, instructor and student uh, resources that are available with this talk. Let's just start with the first, the how, how to organize or customize the chapters that are available here on the left-hand side. As you can see, the My Lab programming is very clear, very straightforward. Left-hand side, all the content, all the chapter, right, Middle side or right hand side is the uh, work area where I will click on the question or the exercise. I will see the question and the work area where I can work this exercise and click submit. Later on, we'll, we'll go to this um, solving question and uh, solution plus the syntax um, uh, reading and compiler error. But let's first see how to organize those chapter. Let's say I want chapter 30 to be on the top, chapter seven, 27 to be on the top, and even the section, um, I want to add a new folder and add exercise on the top of those folder, how to do so. First thing first is to unlock the, the table of content from this look here. Just click on this look. It will be unlocking, as you can see here. And I can reorganize the chapter. Chapter 30 will be on the top. So I will drag and drop this and make it on the top. Now chapter 30 will be on the top. Uh, chapter 24 will be on the second. Chapter 15 will be on the third. And uh, even the section here, you can reorganize them. Or um, as you can see, when I open the 
chapter, I will find the sections, section one, two, three, and so on. Maybe I don't want my student to see uh, those questions that are available in chapter seven. So unmark them, it will not be uh, uh, appear to my student. Or even on the array, I can open sub subsection from here and uh, remove. I already removed those questions from the student view. I can do the same and remove them from my student view. I can delete and move to trash any uh, of the chapter that I don't want to um, show it to my student. So I can reorganize this and delete the exercise from student view. I can add more chapter or more uh, folders. So I will uh, double, uh, create a new folder here, give it a name. And this will be my instructor folder here, as you can see, Ahmed demo, and I can drag and drop this, maybe add it on the top of my folders. Very easy to organize. Um, and I can add, start adding exercises into uh, this folder that I have created. I can create another folder and make it uh, maybe test and assignment exercises. Um, I will click save or add. This folder will be added. What I need, I need to do if um, under the, um, the other folder demo, I can drag and drop this into the area that I want to show it to my student. So this is the way, how can I organize the author content or author material by check the material chapters that are available, reorder them, show and hide some of the exercises for the student, or even add a new folder, which I can add an instructor notes or add exercise from scratch to my student by using the new exercise builder. This is the way how can we reorganize the content for the author. Very easy, very, very straightforward. The key thing that you have to open the look from this area and then reorder uh, the chapters according to um, the course outline or the course syllabus. Second part, is how to assign any of the author exercises direct to the student and how to choose the due date for this exercise. Let's say the loop chapter five, um, I want to assign maybe this exercise, the while loop, um, the first exercise. I will expand the page from here. So the calendar will appear to me, as you can see. So the first exercise, I can choose the due date for this exercise by the end of May here. And even I can choose the time and by minute when that will be the last due of this exercise. Once I'm happy with this uh, due date and time, I can click done and this will be assigned to the student by school. Very, very easy to choose that, go to the next exercise or another exercise choose the due date, maybe this one will be on the 30, and choose the time, choose the minute, and then click done. Go to another chapter or another section inside the chapter. I'll close this, open section uh, 5.4, do customization, assign this to my student next month, maybe a 7 of June, so I can read uh, more already uh, assign the homework for the whole year before the semester started. By just go to chapter, open the exercise from here and choose the due date, maybe this one, second or third week of June and click done. That will be appear to the student and this will be the due date for this exercise. Once I'm happy with this um, customization, moving the chapter, uh, create a new folder, assign the question direct or the exercise direct to the student by choose the due date. For this assignment, you have to look back the look key from here and reload the course. So I need to go here and go to uh, my courses. 
So that automatically will synchronize to the student. Once, as you can see here, it appeared reload. I need to click reload. Now this customization will be saved and will automatically fly to all my student. They will see the chapter in the uh, reorganized way. They will see the um, uh, only the, the appear, not the hidden chapter that I already removed them or the exercises that I already removed them. Um, they will see the uh, due date for those exercises that I have assigned to my student. I hope that makes sense and clear for everyone. Let's move on to the next part, how to solve the question. And what are the additional help that will appear to my student, like the uh, compiler error, as well as the hint and the feedback that will appear to my, to my student. Now let's open this exercise in the same chapter, the loops. Um, I can see all the solution. As I told you, the system already capture all the submission and all, even the percentage of this, the, the student who submitted in this way, those are all correct submission for this coding exercise. I'm going to copy one of them. And maybe we'll do some changes here. I don't want to submit the correct answer. So I will remove this, this one, and this one. Now I change uh, and even here. Uh, I change in this coding exercise the answer. Of course, I can see the solution because I access that from student view, uh, sorry, from an instructor view. If the student access that, this will not be appear to your students. I can open the work area and click submit. And let's see what will happen now. First of all, I can see the compile, compiler error message here. And I can see the hint that will appear next to, um, to my answer. So when I click on the hint, I can see the feedback about my answer. And hint, that will help me to solve this question with this input. Um, highlight for me the mistake line by line. Where is the gap? Where is the area that I'm missing? And I can try again and work again. So I can open the work area and resubmit that. Maybe I will, I will do a small mistake here and submit that and see what will happen. Again, immediately feedback, different feedback will be submitted based on my answer. Um, this is like a super tool that works with the AI, read the student submission and give them a tailored feedback according to their answer. Now let's do it one more time in a correct format and see if the system will read this coding. Submit. Now, nice work, and the system give me a correct answer. From here, on the right-hand side, I can go to um, show the graph roster. So I can see, I don't have a student yet in this exercise. I don't have much submission, but from here I can see all the student answer for this particular exercise. Plus, I can open the pleasure lesson dictation for this particular exercise. And I can see uh, if the student copied the answer from the internet or from another colleague. So I can click here on the pleasure lesson dictation. And this is just a demo, a beta version of the pleasure lesson dictation, this one. Uh, I don't have a student here, but I can select the average correct answer, uh, correct attempt, submission rate, and uh, if the student copy and paste this exercise. This will be appear to um, the instructor view as well. Also, I can click made roster. So I can send to my email the CSV file or the Excel sheet with all the student answer. Or I can download this to my desktop offline. So I can click mail it and this will be sent it to my email direct. Or I can export the data and this will be downloaded into my uh, desktop. So I can track the, the student performance offline. Now you see how student will work into the exercise, how the system will give the student the feedback 
which will be tailored into their work, how the instructor will see all the solution uh, for the exercise and how to track the student progress um, using the, uh, the graph roster and how to see if the student copying from each other by using the pleasureless dictation uh, feature from here. Now, let's see how can I create a new exercise for my student. Let's say this is the coding exercise that I copied from another project. Or I want to create my own software exercise or coding exercise for my student. I want to add it in this area next to 21212 exercise. Or I can add it to my uh, own folder that I created for my student. In order to do so, from here, uh, I just click on the settings and click on new exercise. And when I click new exercise, I can choose from different options, whether it can be the traditional way of running the exercise, or I can choose the code exercise to build a new code from scratch using the input, the output, the, the, the syntax of uh, the code and the software. Plus, even if you want your student to upload full folder, you can do uh, this from building the code exercise. And definitely, if you teach, let's say, Java programming course, you can use a several language um, to create the coding exercise, which I will show with you right now. So from here, I'm going to build a new code exercise from scratch. This is the exercise. I can choose that language. Let's say um, I'm teaching Java course, but I can choose from Python. Uh, I can choose the level of difficulty for this question. Let's say in the middle, so five. I can give it um, a keyword name, just demo. An instruction, you can build the instruction of this code. Uh, the body of the exercise, you can build it from scratch from here, or you can copy it from another exercise from another title. You can build the solution correct solution and correct submission for the solution. Driver from here for the code. Test set. Um, here is the input and output. You can add them. And even the command uh, line arguments, you can add them here. And this is the initial code that the student will build. Other option like upload the file. If I want my student to upload file, so I will allow them to upload file to the coding exercise. Once I'm happy with all the customization and building the exercise, and even I can uh, export photo or add a link, maybe this external link, I want to add it to my uh, exercise here and click OK. It will be added to my student. Um, I can choose upload image or upload link, external link, and click OK. That will be added to my question as well. Once I'm happy with all the customization, I'm building the question from scratch, um, I can click save. That will be saved. But remember to reload this exercise so it can be appear to your student. Now I build this exercise, just a few seconds, and it will appear to my screen uh, under this chapter that I choose it for my uh, students to have this exercise here. Under uh, this exercise, I have my own exercise, which is uh, 00012, because I already built uh, 11 questions before. So this is automatically capture number 12. I can drag and drop this and add it to a different chapter or different uh, folder. So I can add it to case studies, section 5.3 here. By drag and drop this, when I open the loop, I can assign a due date for this assignment, exactly as we did with the pre built assignment for the author. So I will drag this to the right and then choose the due date for my assignment. Let's say next month by the 22nd of June. 
and click done. This will be saved once you click save. And remember to reload again from my courses. <clears throat> Here, I need to click reload. So this will be appear to my student. This is very, very important steps. Two more things are still remaining for our session today, the student resources and instructor resources, the IRC, the Instructor Resource Center. How to find the instructor resources and the student resources. Let's start with the student resources from here. I have the Pearson e-text, I have the video notes. This is the student resources. Let's open the, the video notes from here. Just click on the video notes. And I will have a full library of video notes for this title. For each chapter, I will have a set of videos. Uh, let's say this one, the compiler error. I can open one of them just to show it to you. If you go back to the command prompt after running this command and you see no errors, that is good. Since the Java compiler displays no output, if the program compiles correctly. If there is an error, you will see an error message. Let's go back into the code for welcome.java and delete the semicolon. Compile the program once again with Java. You'll notice this time you receive an error message. <clears throat> Add the semicolon back in to fix this syntax error, save your code, and compile the code once again. <clears throat> Type in DIR. As you can see here, um, the author or one of the author's team explained for the student step by step how to solve this particular uh, exercise. So you will find, a student will find a set of videos here available for them uh, to help them for each chapter, how to solve uh, the problems that are allocated for this chapter. Again, it's an amazing tool as if a private tutor sitting with the student and giving them an instruction about how to solve this problem. Last point here for the student view and even definitely available for the instructor, you remember the Pearson e-text, we said it's available online and offline. A student can save that. And definitely I save to my students so many pages. When I click on the navigation bar, I can see the dots here. Those are the bookmark pages that I highlight, highlighted for my student and add the notes for them that those are very important pages. Even I can highlight this with a different color code I can move between pages from here, just click next page, page number two. And I can highlight some part. I can leave a note with different color code and I can share this note with my students here. And of course, my I definitely I can click bookmark and this will appear in the nav navigation bar. So I can click on this page and see that my instructor uh, bookmarked this page for me as an important and even highlight for me this area. I can re-highlight again using a different color, add the note here and click save. This will be saved in my note annotation area. So I can find all the notes with different color. Maybe I want to see the pink notes, which is very important. Uh, the green is, uh, is okay for my information and the yellow just as reference for me. So I can see them from here. Um, I can track by chapter as well. Where is the area that my instructor add for me and, and notes or annotation. I can access all the, all the chapters from the left-hand side here. I can even access the video notes from inside the Pearson e-text here. Uh, I can open a certain chapter. This is the video note for the chapter exercise. I can uh, open chapter section 
and maybe this is an important page. I can click bookmark, so it will add it to my bookmark area. Again, I can highlight the part for my student using the color coding from here, and that will be automatically synchronized to their view. I can search by keyword, and this will give me all the pages which will help the student studying and reading in the in the uh, ebook. This is a useful tool. So once I I write the keyword and click search, uh, it will give me all the pages that comes allocated with this particular keyword. Again, I can see it highlighted here, so I can add this to my bookmark area and I can clearly highlight it for my student. So this is amazing tool for the student, can access that online and offline with any uh, tablet device or smartphone. They can download the application from the iOS system or Android system and access the ebook offline without internet. From the instructor side, you can definitely do all the annotation custom um, highlight some part for the student and leave the notes and this will appear to your student view. Last but not least is the instructor resources. You can find the instructor resources here for this particular title like the PowerPoint. This will take you direct to the page of resources, which we call it the IRC, the Instructor Resource Center. I can just click here to my resources and see what are the instructor resources that are available with this site. Like the solution manual, I can download the solution manual using my username and password as an instructor here. I can download the answer key. So this is all the instructor. I can download the PowerPoint and we have a very rich PowerPoint that comes with this um, title or uh, other titles that comes with my lab programming. So I can download the PowerPoint presentation, which I can use it to teach this course uh, with my student. And even I can customize this PowerPoint as well. I can access the test bank and download the test bank uh, resources from here. Just click download the test bank and this will be downloaded to my desktop. I think uh, that's pretty much to summarize what we did on um, the orientation today for MyLab programming. MyLab programming is amazing, super course management system for the instructor, help the instructor to create assignment, track the student progress, download the resources, customize the content inside the platform and tailor that to the course outline. Um, easy to assign the question direct to the, the student and track the student progress from the gradebook and track if there is any cheating from the uh, plagiarism dictation. From the student side, it's a homework tutorial and assessment system, which will help the student to build the code, practice on the code, get a fee tailored feedback using the hand and using the compiler error to help them to solve this question. Uh, plus additional resources, which will appear to the instructor and the student from the resources area. The student will have the video notes and the piercing e-text and an instructor will find the instructor resources like the instructor manual, solution manual, the question, the answer key, the PowerPoint and the test plan. Plus you can access other books that comes with my lab programming by building the other courses in your platform and copy the exercise and add it to your uh, course that you will deliver to your student. I hope that was helpful for today. 